Hello and welcome to Cornish Walking Trails. Today we've come back to St Ives. So we've come back to St Ives. Who wouldn't want to come back to St Ives? But we do have a purpose in mind. When we were here back in March filming our stay in Cornwall vlog at 28 Piazza, we did a bit of research and we found the most lovely story about Nil Monument. And we want to pursue that today and share our adventure with you. So there's lovely stories in both our King's England Cornwall book and our Wardlock of Penzance from the 1920s. So we have the briefest of descriptions in the Wardlock book. It says the Nil Monument, about a mile and a half from the old town on a high hill behind Trigena Castle, is a triangular granite obelisk about 50 feet high, known as Nil Monument. So the monument was built by Johannes Nil. He seems to have had a desire for fame of no ordinary quality and during his lifetime had this granite obelisk erected. It was his intention to be buried in the monument and there is another side to the story which we'll tell you when we get up there, it's really sweet. So we have tried to look for a walk in a walk book, a circular walk that would take us from St Ives up to Nil Monument and hopefully back around. We kind of got there but not with much success. The closest we got was our Bob Acton book, our view from Trencrom. It's walk number eight, it's Lant and Carbis Bay with an extension to Nils Monument and Halstown. Uh, we had a bit of a problem because we wanted to try to pick it up from Carvis Bay and just do the Mil Nils Monument bit out to Halstown, but um, really struggling with the instructions, so we abandoned that. So the next thing, it's going to be a homemade walk. We're going to go out towards Carbis Bay and pick up the St Michael's Way, which does go past Nils Monument. Then we're going to try and come back down behind the leisure centre. I don't know, this, this is a long shot because we only, only dreamt it up last night. So. <laughs> this could be fun. So we have got our ordnance survey with us just in case we get lost. We probably refer to it on the way back. We never get lost. <laughs> Not on a homemade walk. <laughs> oh yeah. So it's the 2nd of June and we're now coming out of lockdown. There's various changes nearly on a daily basis now as to what we can and can't do. Currently we're allowed to travel for exercise and the children went back to school. Some year groups went back to school yesterday. We've got some people returning to work now after furlough. So everything's slowly opening up. We don't know quite what to expect from St Ives. We're expecting a lot of it to be shut. We don't know if the loos are open. It was extraordinarily difficult to pay in the car park this morning because the machine is covered up. But we aren't quite sure if we're meant to be paying because there's been a bit of a holiday from car parking charges. So this car park is normally very busy. As you can see at the moment, there's plenty of spaces. Have you told them what we're doing today? Yeah. You have? You've told them what time of year it is? Yeah. Have you told them what's going on with uh, the virus thing? Yeah. Ah. Have you told them we came here in March and we stayed at 28 Piazza? Yeah. Ah. Have you told them we're trying to get up to Nils Monument? Yeah. Okay. And we're trying to... Okay. Well, let's go. What are we waiting for? I don't know. Okay. Like a checklist. Won't be getting ice cream today. It's been so dry this month. Got some wild barley mallows, and in the background, a Dreavy Lighthouse. It's so dry. It could be France. So the plan is to skirt around the harbour, pick up the southwest coast pass as we're heading to Portsminster Beach. The St Ives is renowned for its seagull population, nicking pasties and ice creams. Still here. And we were wondering what they've been up to, whether they got skinny. I thought they might have just flown off and gone on their holiday somewhere. <laughs> yeah. But no, they're still here. This is weird, isn't it? Because it looks 
and feels fairly normal. Yeah. Although it's not normal, is it? No, but so, it's beautiful, isn't it? Snives is beautiful. Yeah. It's not what it feels like to me. No. It's like Snives is awakening. Yeah, like it's had a long sleep and it's, it's all refreshed. Hibernation, maybe. Oh, there's one. What? What, a seagull? Yeah. A hungry Can you one. See it? Has he gone skinny? <laughs> it's a bit. So some places are now open for takeaways. Yeah. That's progress, isn't it? That's yeah. Good. I've actually seen people walking around with ice creams as well, sir. What, actually in cones? No, they're in like tubs and stuff. Oh, well perhaps it's tubs only. Yeah. Do you want one? Could be tempted. So there is evidence of disgruntled seagulls, Sarah. New, had a good window cleaning went on. They've had a good go pebble dash in that one. We need our window cleaners back. <laughs> Still can't go to the amusement arcade. Ah, we can be amusing instead, can't we? I don't know about that. Look, that's really stunning. Really lovely to be out and about. Glorious place to come today. I hope you're enjoying it too. Well, they're open, Sarah. They're selling ice creams. Yes. Do you think someone's selling fish and chips? Oh, I haven't had fish and chips for weeks. Weeks. Harbour, Harbour fish and chips. It's just up here. My favourite in St Ives. Let's go and have a look. It's a bit early for fish and chips. <laughs> well, it's open, it's open. Oh. Sure are open. Takeaway food by the looks of it. Are you planning on doing this then? No idea. The plan was that they would stay around the harbour and they'd follow us. Right, I'm going to stop filming and eat them quick. Well, you didn't get any, did you? <laughs> Have you lost the knack? It's lovely to see some normality returning to St Ives. Social distancing measures in place make you feel very comfortable. So, that's a good experience. Porth Minster Beach, Sarah. Yeah. Looking glorious, isn't it? Some people down there enjoying the beach. They've spaced out their tables, look. Brilliant. Just need some people now, don't they? There's a few places open and a few places shut. Yeah, I mean, I suppose there's enough open for the people that are here. That's what's lacking now, isn't it? It's people. Yeah, people. <laughs> On a hot day after a steep climb. What a welcome sight. Oh. And it's all about that view. I don't think I'm going to be allowed to enjoy it. Oh, he has stopped. Thinking about it. I might get two minutes. Beautiful. Sarah, I filmed the Balkin house so many times in our previous videos, people will think you live here. <laughs> yeah, fantastic view. Put some windows here. Bed, I'm right on. That's probably listed, you're probably not allowed to do that. Would be a glorious view to wake up to every morning, though, wouldn't it? He succumbed to the delights of the view. We think getting our walk done. For anybody that knows the climb from Portminster Beach along the southwest coast path, knows it's quite steep, but. Lovely welcome bit of shade. It's quite warm today. Last of our sunny days for this week. 
So that's why we chose St Ives. <laughs> I think I did. Did you guess it? I think I got him jumping. Oh, there he is. So back to No Monument. Another reason for going up there is that there's reported to be views. Really brilliant views. All of the guidebooks say there's fantastic views and we've chosen the best day to do it. So there should be some fantastic views. Never walked up here before. We think it comes out somewhere near the Cornish Arms because that's where you take the hill up to the monument. So we'll find out together. Would you mind just walking? Pardon? Would you mind just walking? No. No, just walk. I know what you're going to do. No, just walk. It's fine. You sure that's your feet? I don't like you anymore. You could be part of FM's secret sound. <laughs> Is it Sarah's famous farting feet? Okay, so do we follow the lane? We ignore the yeah, junction on the, the right. Left, oh, it'd this be nice lane to is see. Narrower and narrower, isn't it? That's very true. I wouldn't want to meet a car at the moment. <laughs> Where do we go? So this monument then is called the Nil Monument. Is that yeah. Right? So it's actually named after my favourite football team. What? Well, my, my football team is Southampton. And when I was a kid growing up, I always used to think they were called Southampton Nil. Ah! Uh, uh, <laughs> it used to be Liverpool too. Southampton, Southampton Nil. nil. <laughs> so perhaps they've made a monument for us. <laughs> You're not allowed to paint it in red and white, all right? The curse of Cornish walking trail strikes again. I was just enjoying the quiet. Vlogger's nightmare. We got a, a strimmer's chainsaw. We got a chainsaw today. It's usually a lawnmower or a strimmer, <laughs> or a leaf blower. These cottages are just getting prettier and prettier. And older, aren't they? They're more traditional. I think that has to be cutest cottage. Pretty nice, isn't it? Prize of this walk. Love the windows. Yeah, you've just noticed the topiary. It's a little doggy. It is. That's his nose. Oh, hello. And his ears. Fantastic. And his body. And a tail. Okay, so not quite sure where we're going. Don't tell him we're lost. <laughs> but Nil Monument is at the top of a hill and there's still quite a lot of hill that way. You'd think logically it's on the very top of the hill. Yeah. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Because you can see it from St Ives. I don't want to be a greyhound after the, out the traps after a rabbit that we can't catch. Look, so we're coming up here at the moment, aren't we? It's a darn great granite obelisk. We should see it, shall we? We should see it. If you can see it from St Nicholas's Chapel, we should be able to see it from a road. I would have thought so. These Ordnance Survey maps, Sarah. Yeah. Make me laugh. Why? They crease me up. <laughs> Go on, I'd like to see you fold that up at the moment. Well, I am holding it. <laughs> Hat, bottle, drink. <laughs> oh, you show off. Now put it in your bag and zip it up. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. You found it? Yes. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. No energy. Oh, I can see. I can't remember the last time I was so pleased to see the top of the hill. <laughs> it's made me a bit dizzy. <laughs> there it is. Found it. Oh. That must have been the intended entrance for the mausoleum aspect of this monument for John Nil, 1782. Now let's go and have a look at this view. You can literally see for miles. Oh wow, there's St Nicholas's Chapel! Away down there. I was hoping you'd be able to see it from up here. That's a lovely way to do a circular walk, isn't it? Oh, amazing.
and now it's hot and it's the most ridiculous day really for us to do this from a comfort physical comfort point of view but oh my goodness me the views are amazing and I hope they come out on camera stunning Views incredible, isn't it? It's all about the views, isn't it? Not the DPD van, but the views. I haven't filmed that. <laughs> you've got Nankedra and the moorland behind you, and you've just got the Bay of St Ives opening up in front of you. You can see up to St Agnes Beacon, Cambrai. Beyond that, you can actually see Goonhilly today and the Lizard. That is miles away, and Mounts Bay. Fabulous place to come to. Well worth that climb. I'm really glad I made the effort. So we can probably see probably 15 to 20 miles all the way around from up here. Probably not that way because the hills are higher behind us at Nankledra. But okay. That way, yeah, easy. So the lovely part of the story with John Nill, he was obviously quite important in St Ives being mayor and he was a wealthy man. He had this built, this obelisk built and then he moved up to London. Unfortunately he never managed to be buried here which was his wish. However in his will, in accordance with the provisions of his will, the name Johannes Nill or John Nill is also linked with a curious quinquennial ceremony, that's every five years. He left certain property to the mayor and collector of St Ives and the vicar directing that every five years £10 should be spent on a dinner and that arrangements should be made for an elderly woman and ten girls under 14 years of age, dressed in white, to walk in procession with music from the market house to the monument, round which they were enjoined to dance while singing the hundredth psalm. The will also provided for other legacies, including one pound for the services of a fiddler. The commemoration is celebrated every five years on July the 25th. I think you've got plenty of room to skip here. Oh, I'm too tired. <laughs> <laughs> this, is your, this, is your, this is your edition for Strictly. Oh, I'm not going on that. That's too much like hard work. <laughs> There's no way you're going to get me in sequins and bows and loads of fake tan. That's just not my game. <laughs> well, quite fancy, huh? drinking in this view before we attempt to get back to St Ives. So we're going to try and hit St Ives at the Stenock end. You can see the swimming pool from over there, so I don't think it'd be that hard. So our map... I was going to say, do you know where we are? But that's, <laughs> that's kind of a given, isn't it? We're like here by yeah. the monument. By News Monument. <laughs> okay. Oh, the two ladies up there yeah. reminiscing about who they know playing what parts. Isn't that great? Did you hear that, Andrew? Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. It must have been quite a thing to have been chosen to take part in that ceremony, must well, it? Well, yeah, and it's, only, it's once every five years as well. Yeah. And they had to, so the girls had to be of a certain age. Under 14. And they had to be daughters of uh, miners, fishermen. Oh, it's so local, basically. Well. Yeah, but they from most trades, from most professions, effectively. So, have you ever thought, since we've read this story, I wonder how much is left in the will to keep celebrating? Well, you don't earn any much interest on it, is he? <laughs> don't know, you don't know much was bequeathed, do you? It's quite a fascinating story. Perhaps they'll just pick it up as a civic duty. Well, I was just reading that Bob Acton book. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah but Bob said that he also made his um, wealth so off the lizard there was a shipwreck yeah and he was in a, in a consortium which actually recovered the wreck and made wealth that way so there oh, must I have see. been some goodies on that ship that they recovered yeah. <laughs> like legal smuggling yeah <laughs> a cornish curiosity ticked off the list since i read about that when we did our research about st ives must admit i've been itching to get up there There's a finger post here. And we're continuing down the lane. This is all about.
about the views this walk. It's a story of views and views and views from St Nicholas's Chapel up to Nils Monument and now coming down by the Leisure Centre. You can't go wrong in St Nicholas really, can you? It's astonishing, absolutely extraordinary. Love it, you must do this walk. Yes, it worked. So this is the Leisure Centre here on yeah. the left hand side, St Ives Leisure Centre. Yes, and the big car park at the top of the hill. There is, isn't it? Beware, beware of all the cars. Beware of the cars? Yeah. yeah, this car park is normally full at this time of year. Incredible. This is marketplace where the dance is meant to start for these young girls and little children. Oh uh, yeah, it's incredible building, isn't it? It's all rounded at the front. Market house on this site since 1490. It's incredible, isn't it? And then we're going up to the main street of St Ives. I do not know what this road is called. I've lived in Cornwall all my life and I haven't got a clue what this road is called. We will find out. Okay, we're going left here. Now last time when I said this name, I came in for a lot of flack. It's the Daiji. I don't know what it is, Andrew. <laughs> I just got a bit pummeled. Portsmere Beach has a completely different character today. Gentle waves, nothing like those violent ones we see in the winter with them crashing in like oh, thunder against this beach. And of course we've got the children out there playing, it's lovely to see. Now all that remains is us scrambling up to St Nicholas's Chapel to finish the circular walk and see Mills they, Monument again. Why do they build it right at the top? <laughs> I don't know. After a long walk, it's the last thing you want to be doing, isn't it? <laughs> They've got ice creams and a can of drink up there, don't you? <laughs> oh, it not another be. hill. <laughs> When we were researching St Ives for our stay in Cornwall vlog earlier this year, I found this fantastic story about Nil Monument and John Nil, and we just wanted to find Nil Monument. We never got an opportunity at the time when we came back down here, no. down here in March, should we? But uh, we promised ourselves we'd come back and we would do it, and so we certainly have today, haven't we, Sarah? Oh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Really steep climb. I'd probably grade that as a tough walk. It is, yeah, but you are rewarded at the yeah. top with fantastic views. So would you say that's an itch scratch? I would. So what we've decided to do, because this is a homemade walk, we did it on the spare of the moment last night, we'll come back and we'll film all the left and rights for you, put it onto Patreon with all the walk instructions, the video instructions as well, so hopefully one day you might get to enjoy it too. Certainly is a good walk.